you need information to say to certain people, in your situation, you cannot have a border collie because a border collie need to, to hurt. I mean, they need to work every day. Yeah. You cannot have a German machine. You cannot have, a, I mean, a pit bull can be a lovely dog in the correct home, in, the, in a nice home. It can be super. In a wrong home, it can be, can be a gangster who can kill all other dogs. Okay, I have a great show for you guys today. I have Pierre Wallström, and he is a, um, a dog trainer, breeder, handler, a world-class competitor, um, a super amazing guy. You're going to love this guy. Um, I'm going to bring him on. We're going to talk to him, and um, it's going to be a great chat. I've got a lot to explain to you about this. I'm going to explain it with, with Pierre here. Um, Pierre, willkommen. Es freut mich, dass du hier bist. Danke schön. Es freut mich auch ganz. Danke. Und wie war dein Tag heute? Ah, ich habe einen schönen Tag mit meinen Kindern heute Abend, hat wie ein bisschen schwimmen. Ah, Und super. natürlich habe ich auch ganz Spaß. Gestern habe ich meinen Geburtstag. Äh, ich war 25 Jahre. Ja, ja. 25 Jahre, ist nicht so viel, aber. 25, sie sieht gut aus für 25 Jahre. <lacht> ja, danke schön. Sag mal hey, so, Power auf, danke. Das werde ich auch sagen. Hey, du, ähm, wir machen es auf Englisch jetzt, oder? <lacht> Of course, of course. Okay, so we were just playing with you guys because Pierre um, is actually Swedish, not German, but as uh, as a lot of very intelligent people, he speaks more than one language. Um, we had a great <laughs> chat, you and I did, Pierre, uh, uh, two, like two weeks ago. And um, I had just updated the software on my computer here on my soundboard, and um, it was a disaster. I was so happy. I was just starting to edit it, and then I looked, and it was all echoey. And at first I blamed you. First I said, oh, Pierre, had, Pierre did not have the headphones in. <laughs> and then I looked and it was my fault. So I apologize, but I'm grateful to you for doing this again because I think our chat was one of the greatest chats. I mean, I really, really enjoyed. Um, and I learned a lot from you. I, I really did. And I want to kind of, this might even be better because now we can really um, talk about what we talked about, but get into more detail of it. So, sure. Um, so, so to start with, tell um, yeah. me a little bit about you, right? Let, let's talk a little bit about who you are, what you've done, because there is so much. I can say you're like one of the top dog breeders in the world. You're a military dog handler and trainer and selector. Um, you're a world-class IGP, IPO, Schutzen competitor. Where do we start? Oh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to your, to your lovely channel and your, your your podcast everything you are a big name and I've, i have listened to your your parts before and uh, i have to say it's amazing interviews you do and you really take out uh, the right questions from everyone uh, i love to hear them uh, super job you make there i really really hope this channel can reach uh, the whole dog world actually because there are so so many good things that you uh, you ask about and the quest that the people that you invited to your channel is, is amazing with amazing knowledge. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. First of all, and I, as you know, I love your country too. I have been in your country a couple of times. I have been there for vacation. I have been there for traveling, uh, training dogs and helping try to helping people. So I love to be here. I have to apologize a little bit because I'm speaking Swinglish. I'm, I know, you know, I, this is not my first language. It's not only my second language, it's my third language, English. So I hope you understand. And if you don't, please uh, don't hesitate to 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 ask me again because there will be some Swinglish words here some some sometimes. Sw Swinglish. Swing is, is a mix between <laughs> Swedish and English. And I, yeah. I can I can tell you something. I have I have a, I have a, 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 a good man over there who uh, who actually laughed at me during a whole World Championship because I was judging two thousand five. The uh -huh. World Championship in Hagenau in French, uh -huh. and uh, the good man name is Wallace Payne. I think the m m many of the people knows this guy in, in, in USA. He's also uh -huh. an IGP competitor, of course, well known. And I was like, when I give the give the, the give the the critic, I use the word um, um, satisfaction okay. instead of satisfactory. So oh. <laughs> some of the parts of the public was very very pleased and very happy when I said satisfaction all the time because there was a lot of satisfaction predicated uh, <laughs> when I judged right. so but he didn't he didn't tell me the first or second day so the first the last day Sunday he told me hey Pierre actually the the, the you have to use the, the word uh, satisfactory 
when it's mm. uh, satisfaction. So <laughs> I learned that. So I apologize. So yeah, I can use some strange words sometimes. Sorry for that. It's no problem. Sorry. Um, uh, Robert, back to the, to the question. So I started with dogs actually when I was a little boy, shy. My parents had dogs too. They, they, they compete with dogs in rescue at that time. And I was 12 years old. I get my first dog. An Australian Silke Terrier is a it's a small terrier, uh, one of the most dangerous dog I have had. Actually, I, I I love to train with him, and I I do the obedience program here in Sweden. Already done. Uh, I was also a wrestler and competitor, and in different sports, I do some soccer. Uh, we call it football here in Europe. Yeah. And so I, I've been competing in 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 my whole life. Actually, I was not so easy. My parents was the, the worst when I was young. So my, my mother have a lot to do with me and my sister, but I, I get on the right, right road at the end because I get into the military as a, as a soldier when I was 18 years old and I studying there and, and I make a pretty good, good um, soldier time there in, in the armed forces, Swedish armed forces. So I get offered to be, um, to be, a, to be an officer, a military officer in, 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 the, in the Air Force. So I took the chance because I have nothing else. I, I mean, I, I made the high school. I, I made a okay, okay job there, but still the sport and the dog sport was more interesting for me than to study. Yeah. Uh, so I made the, the officer's training program. And after two and a half years, I was done and I started my career. That is now 30 years ago. Wow. So already there, when I started up uh, at the, the five wing in, in small town out, of, out in southern Sweden, uh, air base. Uh, after two years already, I start with with dogs. And at that time, we had special guard dogs. I mean, really, really aggressive guard dogs in the in the aircraft hangars, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have them inside, and we we train them there. So that was actually already my beginning of my helper work. What I do today, and have done the last twenty five years. Mm -hmm. I I mean, we get bitten all over. I mean, we we <laughs> we have no techniques at all. And we worked very, very dangerous dogs. So if we didn't watch out, we, we could have bad injuries, bad accidents. So that part of my, of actually of my dog, dog uh, carrier in, in, in the armed forces. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when you started with these dogs, these were, were these German shepherd dogs and they were just, or were they just like junkyard dogs, dogs that were there to protect the base? Yeah, no, no. They, actually, this is good dogs from the beginning. That was very, very strong. There were a lot of rumors about around these uh, guard dogs that they are nervous, they are afraid of darkness, and they bark for everything. The most difficult with these dogs was that they were maybe too strong because they didn't bark sometimes, and they just wait for the for the people to come inside so they could act against them. Um, this was mainly German Shepherd, many mixed breeds. Actually, it was a companies in Sweden who who lived on train to, to training these dogs, seriously train these dogs. I can give you a clue that when a new dog come, came to our base and we have to introduce him to the new uh, trainers, to the soldiers who shall handle this dog, it took three weeks. So wow. it took take three weeks to, to get a new handler on the, on, on, on the dog. So this was really, really sharp dogs. Not possible today in 2021 society with all different uh, aspects on animal behaves and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but at that time, they were very, very effective, a very, very good uh, guarding actually. Uh, today there is electric uh, alarm systems and cameras all over who do it, who do the job. So mm -hmm. we don't need them today, but at that time they were, they, they were very, very good. And, and these dogs, um, you, you worked with them as far as being a helper, like a decoy, or, or what, what did you do with them early on in the military? Yeah, we, yeah, we played them. We, we, we planned the training for them. We worked mm -hmm. them uh, as, as, uh, as uh, we should do it. We, we, we educate the people who should train them. And we also have, of course, normal patrol dogs, normal uh, search dogs, uh, weapon, uh, arms, um, bombs, explosives, uh, and, and stuff like that, with normal, mm -hmm. normal service dogs. Uh, but this was the this was the introducing to my to my to the dog sport actually because the bite work in, uh, stimulates my 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 willing to to to, to um, appear to the to the fight. I mean, I've been a fighter since I was seven years old in the wrestling. I'm going into mm -hmm. the wrestling ring since I was seven years old, and I've been competing in that until uh, almost until I started in my military career, and when I have to move from from my from my club, so. 
uh, and 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 the IGP or the Mondial Ring or the Ring Sports. I mean, it's 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 close to that stimulation where where if you like it or not, but yeah. it's, it's close. Yeah. yeah, don't you? Okay, so you you're very similar upbringing to me. My parents were divorced very very early when I was young. Um, I was raised in Germany. English is my second language. And, um, and the martial arts. I did martial arts, you did wrestling. So do you feel, and I think we kind of touched on this in our last conversation that nobody will ever hear, but, um, where the martial arts, that structure, that um, mentality, that, that, that martial art mentality of being a fighter, right, of being a natural fighter, helps you in your interaction with dogs? 100%. Okay, you and now agree, I get right? goosebumps. When I yeah, I just it. have it too. And now I, I get goosebumps. Yeah, because yeah. that's that. I mean, you have you need the split vision in the fights. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you are a wrestler or a kickboxer or whatever you do, you need a split vision. You you need almost animal reaction yes. to react on the on your opponent's move or what he or she shall do against you. Yeah. So if you have uh, developed that signal system in your body and. And I can tell you, I mean, I mean, I, I read dogs as as an open book. I mean, yeah. and some I can also read people, of course, because of the dogs. So yeah. Yeah. sometimes that's good. Sometimes yeah. it's good to read um, to read a seven cent. Sometimes it's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> because right. you don't always want to know. <laughs> right. So right. I, I have never think about it actually as what you say now, but mm -hmm. you you that's that's spot on. I mean, yeah. you you really uh, touch it there. Yeah. Because I noticed yeah. that, I mean, it's interesting. I, I noticed in, in talking to you now, I think this conversation is going to go in another direction because um, I know when I've done my work in the shelters, I would just look at a dog and I, I know that dog's going to bite and I'm prepared. I know it. I know it before the dog knows it. And then I would start to make that call. But people would say, how do you know? And, and you don't know how you know. It's like, you know, that person's going to throw a right punch or he's going to go for a sweep. Or he's going to do that. And you just know it. You just know it. And you're, you're able to perceive you're getting ahead of that. And that intuition, that ability with a dog, especially the dogs you're dealing with, which is what I want to get into, um, if, if you don't have it, I don't think you can do what you do, can you? And exactly, it's, exactly, it's also spot on again, Robert, because people ask me the same questions. How, how can, you, can you explain this? And I think it's sometimes pretty irritate, irritable for yeah. the students and or my, when, the people I coach, mm -hmm. because I see some things before them, and I try to explain it for them. But I look mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm an idiot because how do you know that can happen if yeah. when it's not have happening yet? Right. So that's that, that that that's different. But that's that's so close to how animals connection between themselves. I mean, yeah. sometimes you can see two two males, dominant males, go to a other and think. You, some people say, "Oh, they got to fight. It got to be expensive." Yeah. And one half second later, pop, they just go. Mm -hmm. What happened? We don't know. You don't know. But they have already figured out and solved the situation very, very fast. Yeah. So it's true. I think it's 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 uh, it should be very interesting to to put a good hand, a good dog in your hands because you. Yeah. I think you should reach the podium pretty pretty fast. Thank you. I, I don't remember if I told you about this guy uh, from Croatia who 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 bought a dog for me. Uh, this is twenty years ago now. He's a, he was a fighter in Muay Thai, Muay Thai yeah. special art of karate. I understand. And he had never had a dog before. Yeah, sorry. But um, he bought this dog. He was not sure. And, and he was a new, totally beginner. He had no mm -hmm. idea about dog sport. But I tell him to do what he should do. He joined our team. He started to train. And I mean, he have, he, have, he have competed like five or six world championships with that dog. Wow. He ended up, wow. the best place was like 20 top 20. I mean, he have never had a dog in his life. And the dog was a medium dog. It was wow. not a not a super dog, not a bad dog, a nice dog, perfect for him. But yeah. still, because he has the experience from the from the from the from the sport. Uh, yeah. I would say sure. that, that I'm, dogs I'm, I'm, communicate with us through energy. Right? I think when a dog barks, a bark has almost nothing to do with the communication of the dog. But the energy, the movement, the way the dog looks, walks, feels, uh, everything is everything. If you can't read that and you're waiting for something else, you're just not going to be able to train a dog. That's or true. To... And that's also the problem. Yes, that's true. Because I also, as you know, I'm temperament test a, a lot of mm -hmm. dogs. I, I temperament test around 200, 250 dogs. And now it's almost 3,000 dogs. 
who have passed these different tests we shall speak about later on maybe yeah. and the same is there you, you you read reactions you read behaves and sometimes you know what shall happen yeah. already before it happened yes <laughs> and and right yeah that's sometimes that's not 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 good because you have to you must be open mind still and mm -hmm. not not be too fast but yeah, yeah it's easy for me but to explain this is difficult yeah no i agree and i mean i would someday if you're ever here when or not if you're when you're here next time we're going to go work out we're going to have a couple beers and we're not all in a row but we're going to we're going to, i want to really watch you with a dog i want to really do that because i think somebody who who really is a warrior who's a, who's a a martial artist is is somebody i want i want to watch that and i think it's fascinating and i want to get into another topic too later um about the limitations you guys have in sweden as far as tools like prong collars and e-collars i'm going to touch on that but before we do that i want to talk about your breeding program right because you started a pretty amazing thing in sweden um with these german shepherds and i want you to talk about it um because it's it's spectacular talk about how you started how many dogs you started with and, and the evolution of the military breeding program that you, that you are doing there so of, yes of course uh, interesting uh, question yes it's a pretty amazing uh, program uh, the armed forces is, is the only armed forces in the world actually have their own breeding program of, of working dogs like this they have a Canadian program for police dogs and they have different program for guide dogs around the world. But this number of dogs that we do in, in Sweden is, is pretty amazing. We started for around 16 years ago now. We, and there's a lot of people involved, not only me. I'm responsible for the temperaments test and the evaluation uh, and, 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 um, of these dogs. So we have a breeding people around that, the breeding world who decides the genetics and stuff like that. But we are, I'm a technical advisor to that program too because... Of course, I'm involved in this. I'm a, pre I'm a civilian breeder since many years uh, too in my in, 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 as a hobby. Uh, we starting up uh, because we need to secure the, the delivery of, of the procurement of, of dogs to, for, for the military. I mean, we could not uh, get the dogs from the civilian market anymore because they have go they or we because I'm also a sport dog breeder mm -hmm. have go too much in into the sports so the dogs have problems to work in different environments extreme weather conditions and stuff like that they were not bred for service works so that's 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 the that's the truth for the beginning so we decided to starting up this program it was um, um, etology doctor etology PhD uh, Eric Wilson uh, and, and some other people and I who starting up to scan the market and try to find females and we we scan the market and find females around the world from uh, Japan and USA Europe uh, Sweden we actually bought everything that have okay health okay temperament um, not that big not that small and we we, we bred this eight we bought 80 females we maybe mm -hmm. tested around four or five hundred females wow. before we okay. get them until you selected and, uh, and we scan yeah. it, exactly so we have to we test a lot uh, we have to start with something uh, in the beginning so, well, so and we start before let, we get it so, so you had 400 you started with approximately <clears throat> give me some of the points like what were you looking for in the females that you wanted to bring into your program like what what was the big thing what would yes. you look at so first of all when, when when people send in offers to us or we find dogs outside that they want to to uh, to sell the dog especially the breeders want to sell the dog they send in the uh, the papers to the breeding works and to the chief of the breeding station and the first was the check of the the family picture i mean how is the how is the mothers and fathers how is the siblings to this female how is the health hips and front and backs uh is there any siblings who have gone in breeding before so already there you can select the way you can put away um and, and terminate i think it's it's, it's a great yeah, exclude, you can exclude i would say exclude exclude as uh, many dogs from there and after that i mean we have to go and, and check the dogs and i can i can tell you uh it was not the best females uh, mentally temperate but not strongest females who, who at the end uh, produce i mean we have we have we have the military have have bought super females with high score on competitions in 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 europe who produce nothing who produce blue puppies heart problems puppies puppies with open stomachs puppies wow. with all different problems you can 
you can you can have so the first five years was the, a disaster in our breeding a disaster because we recognized everything we have to kick out around 50 percent already after the first little we have to kick out it because it was so so low level of uh, uh, outcome mm -hmm. but we st we started slowly and slowly and slowly so what we try to to do today is try to find a finite a genotype so close as possible from the beginning and therefore we have built up this this special test is not so special but it's a test that that's that's it's based on how fast we can uh, 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 temperament test a dog without uh, uh, without uh, a dog without stimulation. I mean, we don't okay. need dogs with stimulation, trained dogs. If I, if you get a dog, you will come back with a dog who is trained good. And if we, this, it's more difficult to find out what the stimulation, what the genetics. Mm. So we gave we give out this this small puppies we gave out to families. I mean, they go out with eight weeks and come back to me when there are sixteen months around, sixteen eighteen months for tests. Okay. And they are normal families. They are puppy walkers. Puppy walkers. They have no stimulation, no training, no bite work, nothing. Wow. Socialization, a little bit of obedience, try tracking. So, of course, it's, it's it's difficult for these families because now the dogs are strong. After 15 years, when we have breed <laughs> better with better, better with better. I mean, they are they are small. They are small gangsters. This family yeah. handle. You understand? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the family, the families are amazing. They do amazing job, and it's it's when I speak with my colleagues around the world or the sport dog people, they cannot understand how you can have this system that mm -hmm. voluntary people take care about dogs for free almost because yeah. they get le very low level of of, uh, of money, almost yeah. nothing. Yeah. We, I mean, we pay the food and stuff like that. But in Sweden, it's just a culture. They want to give something for the military. They want to give something back. Yeah, yeah. And for some years back, we also cooperate with the, with, with the Swedish police. So we do the test together today. The police and the military do the test to the, together. Okay. Okay. So you take these puppies, so, but I just, I just want to. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you a couple times in this because it's this is so fascinating to me. So you take these dogs. These are German shepherds. These are beyond working line, not sport line dogs. These are really hard military dogs, and you send them out for the first sixteen one sixteen months of their lives to go live with a regular family, just normal people who take their dogs for walks, right? Like a mom and pop and a little child, they go for a walk on Sunday along the, the sea. Those are the people raising huh. your puppies. Yes. And then at 16 to 18 months, then you take that puppy back and now you start developing this dog that you're going to make a beast out of. So. Yeah. So what happening is that the organization is that we have instructors around Sweden. I mean, Sweden okay. is not so so big, but it's big, big enough. It's it takes twenty hours to go from south to to north. 20, 20 mm -hmm. hours driving. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a pretty long country still. So we have yeah. instructors uh, on different parts of Sweden who who are like uh, help desks for those people, yeah. and they take these people in and check them. I mean, every month, every second yeah. month just mm -hmm. to check them and, and how is the situation. And of course it's happening sometimes uh, that we have to take the puppy away from a certain family and put it on an, another family, but because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's go too much. I mean, you, I mean, we see it now, but still the dogs is not crazy dogs. They are not stupid dogs. So mm -hmm. as long as you have not wake up the bear, the bear mm -hmm. is stable. <laughs> yes. So when we start to wake them up and stimulate them with, with trainings, they are growing very, very fast. So what's happening is like they were pretty cool before because you have to understand we have bred 35, 30, 35 liters every year the last mm -hmm. 16 years. Yep. 3,000 dogs has passed this breeding program. So we, of course, we have got a chance to, to, to develop the dog and, yeah. and, and th that we want. Not too mm -hmm. big, not too long. Um, some lines have more sharpness some lines has, has smaller more prey drive yeah you know what i mean so i do yeah we have a it's a i mean for us for dog people it's it's a, it's a, it's the best play station for adult people that love dogs because yeah. we are we are we are we are, we are doing play station uh, all over the all, all over the, from morning to night right if you're a nerd for dogs yeah. breeding genetics genetics yeah. temperaments yeah. This is a dream world. 
Sure. Of course. Sure. So, Big so but that, it's twenty four seven work. Of course. So so now you so now you you've developed this bred thousands of dogs. What are you really looking for? What are you seeing in the dogs um, that separates these? class a dogs right because you're consistently breeding good dogs it's not a really a crapshoot for you anymore because of the background you've done but what is it that changed there is it all genetics is it uh the upbringing of the dog is it um the, more from the, the the female or more from the male i know everybody says it's more from the female i tend to agree with that what, what's your what's your take you're you're the guy you're the expert yeah first uh, thank you but first of all is we don't all of our dogs who co comes is not super dogs, still not. Okay. You have to understand when we st when we start for fifteen for sixteen years ago with this breeding, 16, I said to myself, right? I would 16, 16 okay. years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not sure. Uh -huh. One six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we starting up, uh, it was so bad, Robo. The dogs, the German Shepherds, were so bad. It was amazing bad dogs. I mean, mm. sorry to say the word bad, but. Uh, because of the of the health of the temperaments and high uh, bad nerves and stuff like this so still the, those genetics comes into our lines still today also so i mean we do, i mean you are going to ask how many percent passed the test and how many so i say around 50 60 percent we can still use who have okay. passed the test uh, and what is happening with the rest of the 40 percent i mean some of them goes to security companies and still they work for a society. Have mm -hmm. they passed? Have they failed? Mm -hmm. This is different. It's difficult right. to say, but right, but right. we we, um, we many many dogs goes back to the to the to, to some kind of service work and goes back to the taxpayers. I mean, this, this we are we are do we are dealing with the taxpayers' money. We have to sure. take care about them and give the back give it back. So, but go back to your question is like uh, what we are looking for is is uh, stable dogs who uh, can switch on and off, it's very important. I mean, we have plenty of working dogs today, the Malinois, the German Shepherds, with a very nice on button. Mm -hmm. But where is the off button? Right. I mean, we have soldiers who's, who have to lay down in Afghanistan for five days with a dog. Yeah. And the dog cannot say anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so we have to have an on and off button. And, 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 and the the biggest thing what we are lack what, what what we are lacking on the sport dog is the environment how 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 a German Shepherd can behave on different environments slippery floor high high stairs yeah. uh, and stuff like that that was the biggest problem in the beginning I mean there were super nice dogs in the green grass I mean the bite work right. was good the intense for the ball was nice but when you put the dog up thirty meters up on the stairs what happening there Freak on the slippery out. floor or when the pressure when, yeah totally so. That, that's that's the biggest difference in the beginning well, because before i started to test dogs uh, in our own breeding program i i was also part of responsible of the of the testing dogs when you buy dogs from the civilian breeders and for civilian people so that we were under 10 percent when we buy dogs under 10 percent oh, wow okay so for every 100 so dogs you would that, see you would only take a 10. my Eight, ten dogs, and that was the first alarm clock. Actually, mm -hmm. that we cannot continue like this. Right. We have to secure the secure the situation, like everything else. So um, that's that's that was that was the main thing in the beginning. How dogs handle the nerve situation in different environments, and that's that's pretty logic. Because yeah. why should a breeder why should a breeder in Germany mm -hmm. spend time to evaluate uh, his breeding females or males? How they act uh, uh, on a slippery floor or on on, on strange stairs, thirty mm -hmm. meters up, or in a helicopter? Right. Why is that interesting for him? For him, when he can he can have ten thousand dollars for a puppy he sells to China. I mean, mm -hmm. right. for him, it doesn't it doesn't it, it's easy. Right. I mean, yeah. we should do the same. So, I understand the situation. I, I and I am not the person who shall sit here and kill all the breeders around the world, especially not in Europe, mm -hmm. because there are many breeders still who, 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 who breed good dogs. Yeah. There are many, many, many clever breeders around around the world who breed, who breed nice dogs, but the numbers is not enough. I mean, in USA, I'm not sure how many dogs you're shipping from Europe every year to USA. There are thousands of dogs you're shipping to Europe, from Europe. 
a lot. And this, the, those civilian, yeah, those civilian breeders who cannot cannot uh, maintain, I don't know how to say, cannot give mm -hmm. that, cannot sell dogs in that number. Yeah. It's not possible. So the countries need to secure their own market to 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 to, to breed. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people buy dogs from um, from like why do Americans? I mean, Avi's over there now looking for a dog. Um, <laughs> um, why wh what makes the dogs in Europe better than the dogs here, or or why you know why do people think they are? But this is the same all over. The place. I mean, right? Come on, why 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 do we et establish IKEA in in USA? Why? <laughs> you know the meatballs are amazing. Yeah, yeah. but amazing. you have super good food. You have the best, super good yeah. food I already. Okay. I mean, and like, the potatoes. So the, the potatoes too. It's good, and, yeah. but we use brown sauce on that. If you, I if like you, it. Have I you, know. Have you tried that? No, it's the best. I hate. <laughs> okay. I hate the tomato sauce. I <laughs> love the brown <laughs> sauce. No, you are first one who, who, who told me. No, so no. I mean, <laughs> when you jump over, when you jump over the river, it's always greener on that grass. I sure. mean, this is this is an American people shall not never buy a dog outside his own country yeah. you have super breeders in your country okay. you have nice dogs in your country yeah. but i can understand that some people uh, the tree the trigger to buy a, a puppy from a certain lines that they love yeah and that they then they import the dogs i that's that's okay i understand it but that number of dogs that you import in your country when you can you can do it by yourself that's yeah. that's I don't understand. I don't understand. Let me ask you a question about um, what we talked about, because the, the idea that, and it's a very important thing, I see it a lot when I temperament tested dogs in the shelters, to, to watch their sharpness, right? Um, like a, how the dog responds, and in a shelter, I don't know anything about the breeding of the dog, obviously. But my question for you is, as somebody who's bred, do you see that sharpness, like let's let's use for example a startle response. Like I saw, it, like you drop something, and I'm, if you don't mind, I'd like to post one of your temperament tests in the in this video because it's just I've never seen a temperament test I liked. Honestly, I developed my own. I can honestly say yours is spectacular. It's su it's simply perfect, right? My question to you is: when you see the reactivity or the startle response, the recovery of a dog. Um, whether it's a slippery surface, a loud clanging noise, does that run in the genetics of the dog or do you see that skipping generations or being some puppies will have it and some puppies won't have it? We speak about the primary and secondary reactions. So mm -hmm. when a dog gets a reaction, get afraid of something, I am interesting, not that he got or she got afraid, Right. I'm interesting how the dog handled this fretness. I mean, how long, if you escape five, uh, five steps or 10 steps away, yeah. how do you recover? How do you come back? That is yeah. interesting for me. And the next step is like, how, how is your memory when you pass this situation again? Mm -hmm. Does, do you, do you have problems to pass situation or do you, are, are you neutral? I mean, on that dog, you can see on the video I've sent, you can see you have some problems now and then, but he, mm -hmm. he recover, he come back all the time. Yeah. And what we evaluate is, is, I mean, I don't want to have a dog who passed our test perfect. Right. I need to kill the balloons. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to put the needles on the balloons of this dog to see when the balloons is gone, how, how much is he in your body now? So what I, I what I count, calculate, and, and I, I try to find out during this test, it was around 40, 45 minutes long, is when do you get in trouble? How do you handle this? Because mm -hmm. I have to put my stamp after the test. I have evaluate the whole litter because the whole litter came come on, on the same day almost. So mm -hmm. I, I also um, registrate the, the, the whole litter for the breeding people, breeding words, and give them certain numbers, but I also select dogs for service or not. And the ones I, I select for service, I give my stamp that these dogs, when they come in a trouble situation, if they are going in, in Somalia or wherever they are, middle of nowhere on a, on a strange field and they get scared, yeah. how do you handle that situation? Because it's not allowed for a dog in that strange situation, very dangerous situation to, to not handle your nerves. Mm -hmm. So we have to compromise this 
test situations to push the dogs over the limit mm -hmm. and see what's happening when he comes back. Yes. On a very friendly way, because as you see on the test, the test is very, very friendly. I mean, there's no stupid things inside there. Absolutely. We are not killing the dogs. We are, nope. we are not hitting the dogs. We are not kicking the dogs. We are pushing the, 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 we are testing the brains and the dogs have to work a lot to handle the nerves on yes. different situations, as you can see. But, but, but my question still is, where, where do, do you see that as being a genetic component of a good breeding? Do you think it's how the dog is raised? Do you see puppies where in a litter of eight, three of them have really good recovery, good nerves, and five don't? How, do, how does that work from, breed, from a breeder standpoint? That's the most interesting question, maybe, because if I only have the chance to test one of those dogs in the litter, we should never succeed so fast in our breeding program as we have done because one dog i mean you know it's it's environment it's, it's the it's, it's it's genetics it's the experience of the life you know many mm -hmm. things get involved how a dog reacts sure but when you see a whole litter six eight puppies three five six eight puppies mm -hmm. you test them all you use the same test situation, same systems with every dog. It's voluntary civilian people have no interest in to train these dogs for test to pass the dogs. Right. Some of the families really want the dogs back. So they, they don't do it <laughs> in purpose, right. but right. they don't want to make the dog super good. Some, some, of course, that's normal. Of course. Yeah, yeah, 99%, yeah. 99 of our, 99% of our families want to do the best of dogs, but they have definitely not train the dog or prepare the dogs for 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 to make it nice tests right opposite opposite against the dog dealer who come with the dog mm -hmm. who have trained the dog in all test situations so i have to change situations for for put on kill the balloons you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. so when i see a whole when i see a whole litter there you have the answer of your question uh -huh. if it's a genetic problem or is it environment experience problem or, or what is this? Yeah. So if we have a nice litter, if, for, if I take a, an, an example, uh, I try to paint an example. Okay. If I put a, one litter in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, in your country, Alaska, out of the, on the farm, eight dogs on the farm, no experience at all of nothing than snow or woods. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. You take these dogs inside and they, this litter make a super test. That's that litter is a very interesting litter for breeding. Correct. Because they are showing so close to genetics as possible. Mm -hmm. The opposite is if I put eight puppies to eight world champions in dog sports. Yeah. And they come to our test and they make super tests. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to evaluate how much is genetics, how much is experience from the life. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. So this this is the reasons we try to put these puppies out to different families because they have they don't they don't get trained so we come very very fast very very close to the genetics mm -hmm. but still experience from the life is involved in every situation for sure how they don't react yeah so and do you see that goes in other words if you have a female and you breed her and she has the, the dogs have really nice nerves um and then a female of the puppy one of the female puppies then will breed again do you see that just goes down the line that those nerves really stay that stable all the way down the lines? For sure, yes. Mm. You can, with a good female, a good producer, she don't need to be super good herself. Mm. But if she produce, you can yeah. breed her with a pig or a cow or with a world champion, the IGP, it doesn't matter. Yeah. She yeah, deliver. Yeah. yeah. She deliver. Do you but, okay, so but here's an as you said. But here's an important part of that question. Yeah. Do you think that it's because I think there's two components to it. I want to get your feet on it. And I don't want to taint the question, but so you have the female is producing the puppies. Do you think it's the genetics of the female in the line? Or do you think it's also how that female raises her puppies for those first five, six, seven, eight weeks? I would say it like this, a strong male, uh, a good deliverer, a strong male, he can really, really change and he can compensate a medium female. Okay. On the energy side. Yeah. On the energy. I mean, energy is hunting drive, aggressions, stuff like that. Defense a female, 
my my experience of this is, and this is not scientifically proved, but my feeling is that a, a female she put in if you find dogs with stable nerves, nice, stable, good dogs who evaluate situations clear with a clear picture, mm -hmm. it's a female's. You can thank the female for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If she also delivering the energy, the, the explosives, that the way they they work is difficult to say because I have seen. We have some males in our breeding program. It's the opposite. You can breed them with 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 a toy poodle mm -hmm. and the the offsprings is wonderful mm. so yes 60 percent of me say everything comes from a female female is super super important very strong yes mm -hmm. but I, ha I have also seen during those years now that with a medium female if you put on a medium male it be it, it, it will be medium mm -hmm. if you put on a strong strong producer on that female that comes nice outcomes from that too. So it's difficult to say what is what. It, it's very, very, very important to have a strong, good female as mm -hmm. a breeding female in your in, in your in your kennel. It's very important. Yes, but I have also seen that these strong males. I explain when they breed pretty bad females who have delivery not mm -hmm. so good, they compensate and they come service dogs out of that litter too. Yeah, but, but so the it's, question... it's different. But still, do you think, or, or let's ask this question, how much of it do you think um, has to do with the genetics and how much, which I know it's still going to be a genetic question, but how much of it is the way the, the female raises those puppies for the first few weeks of their life? How much of a component? Oh my that? God, that's, that's, that's 100%. Come on, I would, I would tell you something now. And now, now I, really, I really want the breeders around the world to listen to this, please, because... Yeah. Many, many breeders take the females away from the puppies when they are around three or four weeks. They, the females have the opportunity to jump back and forward or escape from the, from the puppies when the, when the puppies uh, start to attack them because they want to eat. In Sweden, we have a stupid rule, stupid law, that our dogs must have a space to escape to. That's stupid. Yeah, I because know. what's happening What's happening is when, when the dogs are three weeks old and they get the teeth are coming and they start to biting the females because to eat milk. If she can, she goes away from this conflict. That's normal. Right. If you can right. avoid the conflict, you avoid the conflict. Right. But what we need, you and I, when we should train these puppies, is that these dogs have learned to act and react mm -hmm. in an active avoidance. So when they bite the female, we need a female who can take the, the puppies, stop that shit, mm -hmm. and behave. Come and drink of me, but do it proper, and don't bite me. But if she have the chance to escape or jump up of something or whatever, mm -hmm. she don't teach these dogs this. Yeah, this is one problem number one. Problem number two is like when the 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 breeders found out that Mamma Mia these puppies are too small we need to force the female to stay in the, in the together with the puppies to to so they can eat mm -hmm. they attack her and then she get very bad injuries of course on on the juveniles and mm -hmm. uh, you know what i mean yes so this is the first training of obedience for me later on our females must go together 24/7 with our with our dogs of course we take them out for rest from the yes, puppies, of course. we take them out many times a day from the puppies. But when they are with the puppies, they 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 love to be with the puppies, and that's important for you. I, I also have seen breeders who love to show up crazy puppies. I mean, puppies who are six and a half, seven years weeks, who mm -hmm. attack the legs on people, bite everywhere, have no respect. The first time you take them, stop with that biting. The dog uh, try to. Uh, answer you and they say stop again and don't get scared and go away because they're not used to that situation yeah you know what i mean so yeah. the females in these situations are what is very very important very you very gave, important you gave me goosebumps on that because it's exactly what i i love love hearing somebody like you say this people should listen to what you're saying that the the female raising these puppies is going to solve more problems in those first few weeks than any trainer is ever going to solve in the next five years
Yeah. Yes, you cannot, right. you, and you cannot compensate this. You no. cannot compensate this, and and yeah. especially it's a big problem between uh, for many show show uh, breeders for different yeah. breeds, mm -hmm. because they don't they don't want the the females to develop uh, the, too big tits because they are not look good good looking some weeks later on in a show. Right. So they 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 don't they they are afraid of to let the puppy eat from the from the mothers. Yeah. And that's a, that's a disaster. This is very important. And people speak about uh, um, aggressive uh, uh, dog, aggressive dogs. How do you yeah. say that in English? Yeah. Art dog, aggressive. Dog you say dog aggressive. Art? Yeah, dog yeah. aggressive. Yeah. yeah, I can tell you. I have never seen a dog aggressive dog who have been trained from the, of the female from the beginning. I agree. If you have I a eight, seven, a six, seven, eight years puppy who have been trained and and behave training from from her own mother or other dogs in the kennel too yeah for, for god's sake they are they they understand how to behave yeah on other dogs it's yeah. very important from different different yeah. different positions yeah yeah what so at what age do you start to take the puppies i know at eight weeks you give them to a family but at what age do you start taking them away from the mother to start to learn some independence yeah i mean from from three and a half, four weeks, they can start to walk by the own. If the weather temperature is nice outside, we take them out, we walk nice. with them. Mm -hmm. um, but in Sweden, we have also a law that it's not allowed to take them, uh, go away with them without the mother. So, but still we, we, we environment train the dog or we don't, you don't, you don't need to drive away or walk away so far away from, from, from where they are born mm -hmm. actually, but they have to stay, go outside and, and and uh, I have to say that I that I that I prefer dogs on on spring and summertime because those dogs have amazing opportunities to sure. stay outside from they are four weeks old. Uh, so yeah. and and get the voice the loud from different situations mm -hmm. and you know what I mean. Yeah, so I at four weeks we start to to separate them a little bit and start to not work with them but stimulate yeah. them. Yeah. So we can, we do it before also. So when you have, these are all going to be dogs who need to have things like they need to be fine around gunshots, they need to be fine around handling and, and all these things. Do you start to imprint this stuff on young puppies early on? No. No. So you're dealing gunshots, completely with genetics. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Gun, no, no, we don't do that. We don't train them on that at all. I mean, if it happened, it happens. So... Mm -hmm. I know there are different schools who train train that certain situations, but yeah. we put it inside the the daily the daily training. I mean, if you pass an area where there there are shoot there are sh gunshots or whatever, it's okay. Yeah. You you pass that area or uh -huh. or the big big cars or uh, trucks or air airplanes or whatever yeah. pass by. So that's a, that's that's a part of the nature, but. Before eight weeks, we we don't focus on that at all. I mean, we focus on on um, stimulation, touching, lifting, be caring, accepted to be on the back already, to to you know that kind of stuff. Socialization right. stuff is important at the beginning. Got it. And I I am also I'm also against to to train puppies too early. I mean, puppies are good. They are very very receptible in the beginning. I mean, they they take everything. So of course you can train and stimulate them. But to have to have a certain puppy program to train puppies and and also actually select puppies already five six months old, I don't. I am not in favor of that at all. I have seen pretty medium dogs at five months old grow up and be super dogs when they are two. So yeah, and opposite also. So it's 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 difficult. So do you, do you think that this? putting this training on the dog, maybe it's too much pressure on the dog and it starts to stifle the dog, you know, it starts to make the dog more nervy or, or is that your reason for it? I think it's, uh, I think it's two sides. First side is like to push a baby to do something. I mean, if this baby suddenly wants to sleep or if this baby have want to look at this uh, bird or the, this flu or who want to eat some shit from his sister or whatever it is. I mean, mm -hmm. and you are standing there with a toy or no. And the other thing is like, if the dog don't answer on your questions, perfect already. Yeah. You get negative of this puppy. Sure. And when you start to look negative on your puppy, the puppy is finished for you. 
I love that. That's really good. So you give them all the freedom and, and they can have. Yeah, they must have the freedom. Of course, if we see certain things, they are afraid of stuff. They don't want to eat. Mm -hmm. They don't. They are. They are very separate from the rest of the litter. Of course, we have to watch out. What is what is wrong with this puppy? Right. But up to five, six months, just just make them fly. I say, mm -hmm. just make them fly. You know what I mean? So, so tell me now what you get. And again, you're a person who is on an international oh. level. <laughs> competed and, and, and dominated. I mean, you're a very, very good competitor. I've, I've looked you up. <laughs> My question to you is this, because this, what I really want to touch you. on in this podcast is military dogs, right? So you get this dog back at 16 months from a puppy raiser. What is the, what, yeah. what is the, what is the next three to six months of this dog's life look like? Because you, would you have him for a year to train him to get him ready for the military? No, so we have uh, trainers on the on the our bases. Uh, yeah. We have a certain center in the armed forces where actually all dogs pass before they give gives out to to the tra to the dog handlers. Okay. So they start a training program on on on, on a base in in uh, north of our capital Stockholm in Sweden, mm -hmm. and we have good trainers there. And it takes around six to eight months normally okay. to train a dog to patrol work or certain uh, search work for explosives or weapon or narcotics or whatever they should search. Okay. And um, so what, what happening after the test is when I've selected them, they go into these trainers, they stay there for one or two months, different between how many, how many days or weeks they need. And the, the test continue there because it's still, they are still on the test. I mean, my test is 45 minutes. Yeah. I mean, the best the best psychiatrist in the world cannot give me or you a diagnosis <laughs> of 45 minutes. They need to meet us more. Yeah. So even if we are the world's best or we think that we are the world's best to, to select dogs or read temperaments of the dogs, yeah. we are not, no, we are not, we are not close to, to right. but the, the, it, it's a clue. It's a give us a chance to, to select the dogs so we can put uh, our money on the right horse so we don't spend time on the wrong dog you know what i mean mm -hmm. wrong I do, dog yeah. and the border dogs that we don't really know we always free them we, we let them pass for they they can go to the trainers for one or two months and they help me to select them still because we still need to check the, the abilities for tracking the abilities mm -hmm. to behave in the kennels i mean if they make an amazing temperament test by me if they cannot behave in the kennel if they get stress syndromes in a the kennel they cannot be a service dog of yeah. course, it can be in something else, but not a yeah. service dog in the military. I mean. mm -hmm. So during these months, they check the dogs pretty fast. We have uh, feedback from the trainers and we know if they continue the training or not. And many times the dogs stay, they continue the training six, eight months. And then, uh, and the same is actually with the police dog handlers. They have the same, same system. They don't have the certain training uh, areas that we have. They have, they put the dogs almost directly out to, to, um, to the dog handlers, to the police dog handlers. And they do the same, test the dogs for one or two months, maybe sometimes more, sometimes less time. Mm -hmm. And then the feedback come back, uh, come back. And after this, the training, training starts. And it takes six to eight months before they have the ground level of training. And what is that? Involved? Then they puts out to, it, it depends on which kind of work they should do. A patrol okay. dog, for example, is, Search in the in the woods. It's it's uh, it's urban trekking. It's trekking or, I mean, we have a certain trekking system in 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 Europe. Uh -huh. uh, I, I I think you have it. I'm sure you have it too in as a service dogs in USA. But I explained for you last time we speak that sometimes you can see in, on different TV programs that the police dog handler has a blood dog, you know, blood hound. Yep. He's making the trackings, and then you have a Malinois who makes attacks. But Apprehension. Yeah. We, 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 our, yeah, our dogs do the uh, do the both. They are like uh, they can track, and they can, they can bite, and they can search, they can rescue uh, people who need rescue. So they are they are same kind of same same dogs in one package. So the search dog is a dogs. little bit different. Oh, okay, so so they're not dual yeah, purpose yeah. dogs. Yeah, dual purpose. Okay, you have they are dual purpose. purpose the patrol okay. dogs and and the other dogs like the search dogs do difference. Yeah, so they are searching. If they are searching for something, they are searching for certain different things. Well, I cannot speak about uh, open here, but they search for different things. They can be weapon, explosive, narcotics, sure. and how do you do it? And 
and how many different situations they can do it we it's not it's not totally open so right. but they, we have deep in, in the armed forces they have different types of uh, patrol dogs and um uh search dogs okay uh, searching drugs and explosives and weapons as i said right. before and police have the same almost mm-hmm. so the, so they so they the search dogs are one thing for either explosives or drugs and then the other dogs would be a a, a tracking dog and an apprehension dog yeah you can say it like that some patrol we call it patrol dogs that's okay. that kind of tracking dogs as you explained it Yes. They can also have an etiquette. They can also, for example, have education for searching weapons. For example, they can have I it. See. Okay. But as a, a, but a certain a search dog, uh, for example, if we take an explosive or 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 or, or an uh, MD dog or whatever it is, yeah. uh, they 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 never go in bite work. They never mm-hmm. go in that kind of situations. They are they are, they are specialized in in Got uh, in, uh, in Got it. searching so stuff. Yeah. And th- so, th- and those dogs you, you do about it's within a year after you get them back, they're ready to go on duty. Yeah, yeah. So about a year, less. That brings me yeah. to, to the most interesting part of what I want to talk to you about. Um, I know in Sweden and a lot of countries in Europe, you have like fe- like federal, like like countrywide restrictions on the use of things like prong collars and e collars and all this stuff, and. Let's forget about dogs like that have a really crazy high degree of prey drive, like dogs that where you need, there's nothing else you can do, right? Like rattlesnake avoidance or whatever. But I want to talk about how you take these dogs. Now, granted, they're really be- well-bred and they're temperament tested. They've kind of filtered through. But you're going to take these dogs now and you're going to work them and you're not using e-collars. You're not using prong collars. Um, is it... I, I mean, is it harder? Have you ever used e collars or prong collars and then seen a difference? Like, well, I don't need it. I mean, I'm fascinated by this. I'm I'm always fascinated by a different way of doing things. Um, when I started for thirty years ago, I saw uh, electric collars. It was a cable. It was like in meters, two hundred uh-huh. meters cable closed into <laughs> a car. Yeah. So, yeah, I can tell you 100%. If you go on a military base today, or if you go on a police area, region today, and look at them training, even if you should show up uh, security, no one knows that you kill. You should never see a prong collar or an uh, electric collar on the training field. It's not allowed. I know. It's it's we, as I said before. It's two years in prison. It's 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 a, it's a penalty of two. If they catch you with an electric collar, it can be up to two years. Wow. Mostly been a penalty. You have to pay for it. Huh? Mm-hmm. So in 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 a service dog, it's not allowed. So of course Sweden have had to ed- educate the system uh, without these these training methods. And I know it's a different world. And I know it sounds silly. And I know it, it, it will be people around here listening to, to me and say, he's, he's a bullshit. He speaks bullshit. I can say, you are, um, I invite you. What happened to certain individuals now and then? Do we have uh, electric collars in Sweden? Do we have uh, prong, prong collars in Sweden? For sure. For sure. Do we have drugs in Sweden? Do we have Ill- illegal weapons in Sweden? Right. You know what I mean? Have I yeah. worked with this uh, during my 35, 40 years? Of course. Sure. I know everything about this. I was one of the um, educated people from the government. We have, from the government, educated people who who was allowed to care and, and use electric uh, um, colors for twenty five years ago, or something. So I I am, I am I was educated in this too. In the sport, I know it using the sport. I have seen yeah. it been used in the sport. I, yeah. it's, it's not about that, but one hundred percent. It's it's interesting to see. But is this good? Is this bad? Ninety nine point nine percent robot is good. Don't use mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. Yeah. In one percent, I am not. I have problems to understand. Yeah. But t- but so tell me b- by not by not using an e collar, right? And you're dealing. You're de- uh, the reason I'm re- I respect what you're about to say. Or, you know what your conversation is because you're dealing with a dominant dog. You're dealing with a strong German Shepherd. You're not dealing with a poodle. Or, or a golden retriever, 
but a German shepherd that's trained for apprehension work. How do you block? How do you correct? How do you adjust the dog's temperament? If the dog is, you know, hey, fuck you, I'm going, right? How can you now work this dog? How can you convince this dog without the use of an aversive, without using a prong collar, an e-collar, or something like that? The dog's at a distance. What's there's? I know there's a way. Yeah, good, good, good. First of all, the first question is that we had to find out is, is a dog born with this unbehave, un- unobedient behaves? Is he born mm-hmm. with that or she? Mm-hmm. Or who, who have learned this dog to be like this? Right. Okay. As I said to you, when we chat a little bit before, it's like, is this a surprise when you stand and look at the training field, when the, when the handlers take the dogs from the cars, run to the field on the leash with the dog, the whip is on the helper, the bite start, 50 bites, long attack bites, boom, 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 a lot of stress, a lot of high drive. You do this during six months with this puppy, he's one year old. Mm-hmm. And suddenly the trainers say, mm, you have to have some obedience with this dog. Okay, we put the <laughs> electric on, boom, the dog bite the handlers. You're starting a conflict already from the beginning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I, this is one example, what I mean. I mean, if you track a dog, tracking, I mean, in IGP, we want to have slow dogs tracking slow, easy, mm-hmm. very, very careful. Yeah. But if you let this dog track like a Formula One car or a, or in the car for six months, and then you find out now I want to slow down the, the speed. And for that reason, I have to punish him. And when you punish this dog, the dog don't understand it. So he gets in stress. And when the dog comes in stress, he wants to continue the track and come to the end because there is the ball or there is the food. Mm-hmm. So you, you make a force retrieve on the track almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So you, yeah. As a trainer, handler. So what many people in Sweden is doing in the beginning, it's pretty boring to see when you wake up a protection dog on the Swedish training field from, because it starts with control directly. I take my dog. If he's six months old, four months old, one year old, whatever the dog is, the dog has to stay with me, look at me, we start together with me. We make the healing with me, we start the protection through me. If you do that for the first exercise, you are at me, at least you are the driver of the dog and not the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, and then you come to the next question. Okay, Pierre, but if you get a gangster, you get the dog who have go over the bridge, what are you doing then? That's another question, as as, as you said in the beginning. If a dog, a police dog, who is four and a half years old, who has rescued many people, he brings in a lot of criminals in prison because it's a super dog. Suddenly, these dogs start to hunting a bears, hunting bears or elks in the woods. Yeah. What should you do? Shall you, in this situation, is this allowed to use electric in that situation or not? Right. That's my question. That is not a question for me to answer. Okay. This is very, very. <laughs> I am, I am pretty up because I'm, I'm sitting here as an official person. But I can yeah. tell you, I, I am stupid if I say. I'm stupid if I'm saying that it's not allowed and it's in, in animal abuse to use it. Can I do it in Sweden? No, I cannot do it in Sweden. Mm-hmm. I cannot do it in many other European countries too. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Germany yeah. is forbidden. It's yeah. forbidden all over the world for the, uh, almost now. And, it, in various yes, and I said it again, yeah. Nine, 99.9% is not acceptable. Yeah. What is not acceptable is when sport dogs people use this for, for getting a medal. Mm-hmm. Then you have to speak about ethic or moralic situations. Yeah. Do you need it or not? Yeah. But the police dog who can rescue rescue dogs, mm-hmm. rescue lives, or a military dog who suddenly in, in Mali start to, to run after birds instead of mm-hmm. searching uh, mines or yeah. bombs. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there are there are certain other things to to steer, to, to, to put the dog back. You don't need electric collars in that situation and then you shall not do it. Mm-hmm. You shall not do it. There is certain other training methods that is much, much better. We know it. Yeah. But so, we have to have this question open. Sometimes we yeah. have to speak about this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I think it's hard where, you know, people, and I've seen electric collars and, you know, my wife does um, hunting training and I see these people just abuse it 
And I've seen her take a dog that's, I mean, a very top line hunting dog, and with very, just really very positive focus training, has taken this dog, and it's a beautiful dog. He has a wonderful personality, but he was never crushed, where another trainer would have taken that same dog and just crushed him and made a different dog out of him. And I see yeah. that with e collars, but I also see it with just heavy handed trainers, right? It doesn't have to be an e collar, it can just be somebody who. You take away the e-collar, and suddenly they're abusive physically to the dog. They kick the dog. They, you know, they they smack the dog a lot. That can be equally as abusive as well. How does Sweden fare on that? On heavy-handed training? Exactly, exactly. And and I hate to see it. I hate to see that because I have to ask myself: Is uh, because I know when I was educated from the government to train. This was um, uh, dogs on, on the, in the Swedish uh, Alps, Swedish Alps uh, in, 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 in North Sweden, who was taught to hunting um, uh, our, uh, our reindeers mm -hmm. instead of uh, hunting the birds. So we, or, or also actually the, 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 uh, the sheep on, 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 uh -huh. on different farms. So we're not allowed to attack them. For so sure. we found out a system and we, are, we were educated, uh, licensed, educated training. So I know the effect of uh, electric colors. I know it. Yes. And in that, in some situations, is an electric impulse much more um, animal correct, uh, not against any abuse at all, than a crazy kick or hit from a, from a crazy handler. Right. So, but I am not the man to, to put on the ethic. Situ no, no, ethic. No, no, I can no, only I say what is good or bad for a dog. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, but 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 to come back to the, to the question in the beginning is that if you if you use electric colors on everything in your country, yeah, too much. I agree. If you come to Sweden or to uh, to to Norway or to Denmark, you should get a shock because no dogs use this. No one have it on the streets. Yeah. If you come on a, on a training groups, you don't see this. Mm. You can. People can use it and hide it behind the corners for sure. Right. Yeah. But people use drugs too and have illegal weapons too. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, so you said something interesting in our last conversation. Um, you have these restrictions from government wide. And I think being, I mean, n having been to Europe a lot, you guys really obey the laws of your country. Like it's, I mean, some people may do it illegally, but for the most part, you know, a country like Sweden and Denmark and Switzerland, it's a very law abiding country. Like you say, okay, this is the law. I'm going to do it this way. America, eh, not so much, right? America, they go, okay, it's the law, but you know what? Screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to find a way around it. You yeah. said something about Sweden when Sweden went into with IGP or which was uh, IP or Schutzen back then, Tell me the story when um, when Sweden went into the World Games and how well you guys did by 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 following that rule and 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 training the way you trained. What, what happened? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, the dog sport world was in shock when Sweden come nineteen hundred ninety nine in Germany, actually in Baunata, the first World Championship where we had a team. I mean, we were like a, a top team already the first time. And they get totally in shock the, the year after when we get world champion for team. I mean, it's like in I, Indonesia should be world champion in baseball uh, or or in, in American <laughs> football. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah, it can yeah. never, we, I mean, we, we, we beat the Germans, the Belgium, the Holland guys, the, all the big countries, we beat them. Yeah. And we came from no, nowhere. And we have a super, super uh, talent group of trainers that time and nice dogs too. And 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 uh, and the training methods that was grounded in our in our um, in our in our milk from our mothers is mm -hmm. is is not to use certain stuff to train dogs. We mm -hmm. we are we are teaching dogs for uh, positive training methods in the beginning for sure. Mm -hmm. At that time, we have no idea about different training stuff, electrics or no electrics. We have no, we have idea, but not in the sport at least. Right. So that was a shock. And we, I mean, we have during five, six years, super, super results from Sweden and people around the world cannot understand it and try to find out if we have super, super dogs or if the training methods were good. But if you see uh, uh, from the history and still today, the Swedish obedience uh, uh, um, has win world champions and top five, top three every year. Agility have very, very good trainers from Sweden in Agility World Championships, yeah. high places every year almost. 
So if that's if that's depending on the training methods, good dogs or a combination, I don't know. But um, in Sweden we have a, a, a club in Sweden called the Working Dog Club, the Bruksunds Klubben, and that club they are thousands of members around the whole world. They're training every week and every night. And on those clubs, if you go there again, I tell you, you will never see colors like this. On the other hand, we have other groups training private, you can see. Of course, you can see stuff like we have explained before, mm. but not in that numbers that you have in your own country, in, in yeah. USA, for example, never. Yeah. And I, I, I made an interview about this in, a, in an American magazine for 10 years ago, and I get attacked from, from the top trainers in your country because they didn't believe me. So, uh, yeah, and they still know. Uh, that we are, we have these rules in Sweden. And we have to adapt to, to, to that yeah. situation. We yeah. we cannot go around with electric colors on the streets without on, on our dogs. It's not possible. Yeah. So, do you think? I mean, I look at this from two sides. Like, I'm I'm I use e collars. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I have a problem with abuse, any kind of abuse. I'd rather see somebody put a low level e collar stem on a dog than to kick a dog or or just you know beat a dog or you know smack. And I've seen both. So. Um, I, we here in this country have a huge problem with dog aggression, right? And we're kind of getting off the topic, but I mean, you, you are so fascinating to talk to. I could talk to you all day. Um, you, you know, so we have issues with a major pit bull problem, right? We have major s s real aggression problems where people are just in the backyard breeding these dogs. We have dog fighting here in this country. We have people who are breeding dogs and selling them for a hundred dollars on street corners. And, and this goes on all over. And so every once in a while, you're going to end up with some of these dogs. And it's, it's not the largest percentage, but it's a small percentage of these dogs that they're just going to be throwaway dogs. They're just going to end up being, you know, a, a, a abandoned, abused and killed in our shelters. In our shelters, we kill probably close to 600,000 dogs a year. And a lot of those are behaviorally challenged dogs, right? What, what does that yeah. picture look like in Sweden? Sometimes I wanted to live in your country. First of all, I have to say that all those times I have been in your country, the number, the times I have seen abusing of, for example, of electric colors or 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 or, or prong colors is is the number is so low. I mean, even if the trainers in your country use electric colors, it's not it's not no animal abuse at all. I mean, you right. you don't even recognize that the dogs get a correction. Yeah. So 99.9% .9 again of your trainers in your country uh, use these methods very, very well. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes we in the Nordic countries or in Europe are stupid because people in our countries, they kick the dogs. They kick the dogs or hit the dog with the leech. Mm -hmm. It looks worse. It's, 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 it's right. very it's too much um, uh, abuse. So yeah. that's, that's a good discussion. And, and I can say sometimes I, I wish that we could use different methods to, to save more dogs. Uh, but I'm working every there? day to save dogs. It's a problem. We we kill dogs. We kill strong dogs in Sweden. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We 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 kill strong dogs in our country, different breeds. Mm -hmm. And the, if the solution is to have a, a electric colors on them or not, no, no, that's not the that's not the difference. The difference if if we are allowed to correct these dogs or not, because they need some dogs. Some of these dogs need to behave. Need right. some kind of physical corrections. Yeah. And that's it's not a, it's not against the law in Sweden. But the okay. problem is that when you make a correction in Sweden and you and you open that part of your training, mm -hmm. you are also it's also possible to report you to the government, for example. Wow. And then you have to defend you against those ga gangsters. Yeah. Why do you correct this dog? Mm -hmm. Because the dog five seconds before tried to kill me, bite mm -hmm. me. He yeah. was hanging in my jacket. He was trying to go on my throat, <laughs> so I have to hit the dog. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't see that. You right. only see when I hit the dog. So yeah. that's the other side of it. <laughs> yes, we. I can tell you, I am so, and you see me now, I am so emotional involved with yeah. those dogs, good, strong dogs from different breeds who get killed. Yeah. I'm also sitting in a group, for example, with dog fighting. I mean, pit bulls and stuff like that. And I am also... Um, experts in, in, in different courts cases uh, because of to explain the animals behave when they attack yeah. dogs. We have a, a boy who was killed by a, by a pit bull for, for two years ago in Sweden, get bitten in the throat. And yeah. I was one of the 
uh, guys who, who in the court explain how dogs do and yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we have those problems. And, and, and I can tell you, there's not so many dogs that are bad or stupid in the head. No. Many dogs. I can tell you, if a dog survived the first eight weeks in the puppy box with a female, if the female had not killed her, him yet, this dog is normal in the head. Yeah. But that's so rare, right? I mean, th look, you and I are going to definitely have more discussions on this because this is just, you're, you're just right up my alley with what I believe in. Um, but this whole idea, if we have this perfect dog, it's, it's a, it's a well-bred dog. It's a genetically sound dog. It's raised by a good female. It goes to a nice puppy raiser home or a nice family home. Very, very rarely, if ever, is that dog going to have behavioral problems, right? But that's a lot yeah. of times. And I don't, again, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated and curious at the same time at what's the difference in countries like, I mean, Sweden is such, it's a country of laws. It's a proper country. It's a government run country where people believe in the country and you take care of your own, yourselves, your, your, your citizens, your, your this and that. How much of a problem is it there with, with people breeding pit bulls in their backyards and, and selling them for a couple hundred, uh, what is it, kroners or, uh, in, you know, in, in, in the street? Yeah, yeah. Uh, illegal dogs, illegal breeding, illegal selling of dogs was bigger for five, ten years ago. We have the mm -hmm. we have um, certain people from certain areas in Europe who, who who moved into Sweden to 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 live on dog fighting and sell dogs for dog fighting. So yes, oh. we have this problem, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not that number you have. I mean, there's it's less now. I yep. mean, we had in Sweden people uh, tied up the dogs out, outside the shops go inside shopping the dogs get stolen because they're using as a training for the pit bulls you know what i mean so yeah, we had know. this problem in sweden too wow. yeah the shelters are full in sweden for the moment they are full but not full of dogs with problems full of dogs because of stupid families now during the COVID times have bought uh, the dog yeah. and now when they start working again cannot have the dog so yeah. that's another type of problem we have for the moment now but we don't have the number of, of the dangerous difficult dog we have dangerous dangerous dogs from different yeah. breeds yes but still th this is also responsible from the government from the kennel club sites to inform the people more active than they do today yeah. because you need information to say to certain people in your situation you cannot have a border collie because a border collie need to to hurt i mean they need to work every day yeah. You cannot have a German. You cannot have. A, I mean, a pit bull can be a lovely dog in the correct home, in, the, sure. in a nice home, it can be right. super. In the wrong home, it can be can be a gangster who can kill all other dogs. Yeah. And do you really ask yourself if you take a pit bull, tell you, or or a bully or whatever, who is genetically trained from the beginning to to go in go and fight with bulls? I mean, yeah. or with big animals. Yeah, yeah. So and you then you you teach that dog to. Uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah, people there. always think it does. It's ridiculous. It's there, so. yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's exactly, true. exactly. So, so genetics is is a very important when we educate these people. But to, to answer your question, is it a big problem in Sweden? Yeah. No, it's not a big okay. problem. But, but we it have is a it. problem nonetheless. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yes. so in yes. in wrapping this up, because again, I mean, I try to <laughs> limit the podcast to an hour. We're way over, and we, I, I literally, we could talk all day. Um, I apologize. I speak too much. No, no, you don't. Actually, you're, you're, when, when are you coming to America? When are we going to sit down and hang out? Because you, we're going to have a great time. We do. I get my second uh, injection now from the COVID, so know, we, have, we start to plan now. All... Okay, start to plan. I've got mine too. I'm totally safe. <laughs> and I was sick as a dog after I my can... second one too. I am yeah. so happy that you told me. I'm not happy that yeah. you get sick, but no. I, I said to my wife, I had to explain for her, but I cannot make the interview now. I have fever. I'm yeah, yeah, bad. Yeah. I'm low. Yeah. I have never been away from my work for, uh, because of sick illness for 30 yeah. years. Not one day. It's yeah. sick. I, but <laughs> I have never. But I was down after the did second. Your, did, did your wife get sick? Did your wife get sick after the second injection? Yeah, first two because she had COVID. She's working oh. as a nurse in a hospital. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay. she had COVID, and the first shot, the body really answered. She was, she was really. Knocked out for two or three wow. days. Yeah, yeah, my wife, yeah. my wife, nothing, right? Nothing. She, she said my arm is sore, right? And then I got so sick the second day, and she looked at me. You know, oh yeah, big strong guy, right? Oh. I was in bed shivering. I was so I was like, oh my god. And she goes, come on. Oh. Come. She was up out. Didn't you know, I mean? She she brought me soup. She took very very good care of me. But 
she didn't get sick yeah. at all. I mean, that's where you see women um, are much stronger than men in so many ways, right? For women. sure. I, I have to. <laughs> yeah, if, you can, if you can give birth to, to children in that right? situation, we, yeah. we, we have no idea. No idea. So we are a softer, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's wrap this up. But but to be continued, I really want to get you back here. We should have a. would like to have an ongoing conversation with you about these differences in training between Europe and here. Um, I, I love what you do for the military. I want, I'm going to put some of the videos, you know, into the video um, that you sent me. Um, you're a fascinating guy. I mean, your background is is world class. It's stellar. And uh is there anything you want to say to close? Because um, and just let me know when you want to come back on the show because it's, this has just been such a great chat. First of all, thank you so much for having this chat and talk with you. It's so clever. I mean, I know that we have not said enough in this subject. With different subjects, we speak about uh, military dogs, police dogs, service dogs, and all, overall competition. A little bit about breeding, of course. If people are interesting, I, I'm willing to, to share what I, my experience, what I have learned during all these years. And with your questions, with your knowledge, because you are not, uh, you are not, a, not so stupid either, right? but you have a lot of knowledge. I see what you know. And when I speak with you, you, you take out answers for me that, that is very, very, your questions is so clever. So at the end, uh, I want to say, I really, really hope that people follow you and, and, and see, because this is more education than any kennel club in the world can give. And I, I really, really hope that it goes on your on your channel. And and I want to come back as soon as possible and chat with you again in what subject I, I can do, what I can do for you. And 100%, we must meet when I come over uh, next time. I have to go over and visit Avi, for example. I, I'm, yeah. I'm trainer together with Vadim, Vadim Plotsko that you have an interview I, also I with Vadim. the president. Yeah. So, so, so um, I, I hope to come back soon and, and um, we are planning, we are planning and we have not okay. put the, 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 the dates really down yet, but, okay, but you, um, when it's possible, we, 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 we have, yes, yes. Yeah, you let me know. Sure. Okay. Thank you so I'm, much. I'm, I'm going to go to Ikea and have some Swedish meatballs in the next couple of weeks, just to, just to remember you. Yes. And I go McDonald's here. I go McDonald's. I go get the big, uh, the big, uh, Burgers there, I get Coke, the Coca-Colas. Yeah, yeah. We have <laughs> so, In-N-Out Burger in California. The great, the great... In, In-N-Out Burger yeah, in out I, I, Yeah. Love In-N-Out Burger. Yes, but I like, I like this, um, oh my God, where you get peanuts? You, you, you get, brother, no. What? Oh, those burgers. You go inside and you have free peanuts. You, you can have those peanuts for free. Uh, you get, uh, brothers. Where oh, brothers? I forgot the name. Okay, you got to text Not me. Not brothers. I, I no, but I, I, I text you about this yeah, this burger no machine. No, I've never heard of this. We so when you go inside, out. you you can you, yeah. I, I don't I don't know this is this peanut okay. thing. I don't know it. I've never heard of it. No, no. I I gonna ask, I gonna ask my friends over there and I, okay. I text you in 10, 10 15 minutes. I, I, I okay okay yeah, I do I gotta know I gotta know where that is. Okay all right listen Sorry, I forgot. we're gonna be back soon. Um, Great, great chat. I'm going to put some videos in here of you. Um, any context if you want to send me, I'll put it in the description below. And you guys, if you're watching this show, if you have questions for Pierre, military dog questions, all these kind of breeding questions, I think you are a wealth of knowledge, Pierre, on breeding, on genetics, on, on, on temperaments, on bloodlines of dogs. We didn't even get into that. And we will in the next one. Um, ask a question and Pierre will be back soon. One, uh, one of my great, great conversations. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.